Hello, I'm Dean Bertram, and welcome to My Weird Library. When I was about 15 years old, I wandered into a library in the northern suburbs of Sydney, and I borrowed this book, not this exact copy, but this, this same edition, H.P. Lovecraft's The Dunwich Horror and Others. Everything from the coy artwork on the front of a character called Wilbur Waitley from The Dunwich Horror to the strange-looking alien-type worm mesmerized me. And, of course, the stories mesmerized me. So they had an incredible impact on me. I launched a film festival called A Night of Horror International Film Festival in Sydney back in the mid-2000s. It's probably that country's major genre film festival still, even though I don't operate it anymore. But one of the things I introduced was an H.P. Lovecraft category, and the name of my production company is Lovecraft 21C Productions. So obviously... H.P. Lovecraft's writings had a pretty big impact, but they didn't just impact me. They impacted horror authors from Stephen King to filmmakers like John Carpenter. They influenced heavy metal bands, video game designers, role-playing game designers, a plethora of other people just writing and working in horror. He was actually, without a doubt, the most influential horror author of the 20th century. And we've talked a little bit about his influence in a couple of previous episodes. I'll link one up at the end of this. And we could do an episode where all we did was talk about his influence. But what we're actually going to talk about today is why we even got this book. This is a book from Arkham House Publishing. And Arkham House were the company that saved H.P. Lovecraft. In fact, the two progenitors of that company, August Derleth and Donald Wandre, realized when Lovecraft died in 1937, he was only 46 years old when he died. And it came as a shock to many, even though Lovecraft had been in ill health, people like Wandre and Derleth didn't expect his death to be that sudden. And they realized that Lovecraft's legacy would probably be pretty much lost if they didn't act. Today we take Lovecraft for granted, at least anybody with any interest in horror. His books are available in not just specialist bookstores, in any bookstore. There's whole archives on the internet of his stories. You just have to, as I said before, really even read a modern horror author or watch a, a modern horror movie and chances are you're going to bump into his ideas. But Lovecraft had only really been published in the pulp magazines, particularly Weird Tales. He'd also appeared in a couple of anthologies, and he was well-loved by that type of fan community around that type of horror fiction then. But this wasn't the days of horror conventions, and it wasn't the days of massive authors like Stephen King's or Dean Koontz or Anne Rice, people who were, were read by millions of people around the world. This was a very small community of writers and a small community of readers. And so Derleth and Wandre thought, we need to try to publish the best of his writings. And they actually put together a collection of his writings, and they tried some major publishing houses, which were too, I suppose, they, they were, it was a risky idea to publish the collected short stories and novellas of a, a, an author who was unknown outside of weird tales and other pulp fiction fandom, really. So ultimately, they decided what they had to do was come together and launch their own publishing company, which they did, and they called, Ar they called it Arkham House. They named it Arkham House because one of the towns in Lovecraft's fiction, which was kind of a stand-in for Salem, was a town he invented called Arkham. It's one of those titles which is part of the broader mythology created by Lovecraft. Titles like towns like Dunwich or the, or the Dunwich Horror, pronounced Dunwich or Dunwich, I hear it pronounced both ways, or Innsmouth from the shadow over Innsmouth were also creations of Lovecraft, just as Miskatonic University was a creation of Lovecraft, just as the Necronomic and the book was a creation of Lovecraft. So they named the publishing house Arkham House with the intention of keeping in print Lovecraft's stories and also his letters. So they initially published a book called The Outsider and Others. I don't have The Outsider and Others on my shelf. I wish I did. A good copy of that source for thousands of dollars a day. Actually, a good copy even of the first edition of what I showed you then, um, uh, Dunwich Horror and Others, can sell for up to 500 or more dollars, depending on how lucky you are when you're looking for it. But the, the original one, The Outsider and Others, sells now for... Absolutely, yeah, for 
at least a thousand plus dollars if you're lucky enough to find a copy in decent condition. Now that book was named because after one of Lovecraft's most famous short stories, The Outsider, and also because Lovecraft himself was really an outsider. But this isn't so much about Lovecraft. It's about Arkham House, and it's about August Derleth and Donald Wondry, and August Derleth in particular. Derleth has been often criticised by Lovecraft fans. One of the things he did, other than publish at Lovecraft stories, essentially saving them from oblivion, was he posthumously collaborated with Lovecraft. So there's some of those collection, or most of those stories are collected in this Arkham House title, The Watchers Out of Time um, and others. So Derleth essentially got brief ideas from some of Lovecraft's um, letters he might have read or exchanged with Lovecraft. Of course, he knew Lovecraft, as did a lot of writers in the field. Lovecraft wrote extensively long letters to various other people who approached him in the field. But people often criticise Derleth for over, perhaps over-literalising or pastiching Lovecraft or making it too accessible. And certainly Derleth's stories don't resonate perhaps the same way that Lovecraft's do, but so, I mean, the writings of few authors who've replicated Lovecraft, and many have, resonate in that capacity either. People also used to criticise Derleth, thinking that he'd snatched the rights to Lovecraft, because, to Lovecraft's writings, because initially Lovecraft had supposedly named a literary executor or the executor of his literary estate to a teenager called, uh, his name was R.H. Barstow, I believe. And Barstow was a big fan of Lovecraft and Lovecraft was a genuine friend of his. Unlike a lot of Lovecraft's friends in the in the weird tales and fandom community around that, he actually did spend time with Barstow. He visited Barstow's family in Florida and stayed there for about a month, I believe. And you can read about um you can read about some of that in Barstow's reminiscences are amongst um the collection in this other Arkham House title, which is wonderful, Lovecraft Remembered, which collects a number of memoirs and reminiscences about people who had uh, who knew Lovecraft or had interactions with him. But anyway, Lovecraft was Lovecraft was very impressed by this young man, who I think was only 16 when Lovecraft visited him. And so he said, I want him to be in control of my of my estate. Also, the young man was, Barstow, was almost an obsessed fan. He'd contact writers like Lovecraft, begging for signatures and begging for manuscripts. And so he had a number of Lovecraft's original manuscripts anyway. And apparently when Lovecraft died, one of the first things Barstow did was visit Lovecraft's home. Lovecraft was living with, with with an elderly aunt, and depending on what interpretation you read, he kind of ransacked a lot of Lovecraft's writings and papers, and and took them away, and then presented some to a library. But Derleth and Wandre realized that a this guy was too young. He was only eighteen. He wasn't even really of legal age in many ways in the United States of America, and he certainly wasn't about to publish Lovecraft's work. So they stepped in and kind of convinced or wrestled the rights away. And certainly after um, Barstow died and tragically he committed suicide in the early 1950s, then I believe it passed it entirely to, the copyrights passed entirely to um, to Derleth and to, to Arkham House. Now, there's something very special about reading an Arkham House book. Again, I mean, it's the fantastic cover art. Here's the, the, same, the same kind of printings edition of Dagon. Um, both by the wonderful arts called Quay, but even more modern, even more modern editions. Like I have a number of editions from the 1980s. Here's a Dagon edition with another fantastic cover. There's just something about holding these books in your hand. There, there, there's an eeriness to them, particularly the older artwork. But you know you're a part of, of history, really, or you're holding a part of history because we wouldn't have Lovecraft if it wasn't for Arkham House. Now, you can go into a bookstore today and you can buy, you know, annotated versions of Lovecraft. You can buy hardcover collected versions. You can buy a bunch of different paperbacks. And it's not that they're not worth having. I mean, any anything written by Lovecraft is always interesting and worth reading. But there's something about Arkham House that that puts you in direct this direct line with Lovecraft and with the people who saved Lovecraft, and you're reading something which is more than a just a book. It's more than just reading the writings. It's reading the encapsulated 
collection or the, the way they were saved initially, the company that saved them. And you, you, you kind of are really a part of that when, when you buy a book from Arkham House. I can't recommend enough getting Arkham House editions of Lovecraft's works. They feel better when you read them. They're really, it's something quite, quite magical. And ironically, I was saying how much some of these old editions go for nowadays. When Wandry and Derleth launched Arkham House, I think the, the first edition, The Outsider and others, which they printed in and published in 1939. I think they made about 1,200 and something copies of that. They could hardly sell it. It took them four years to sell every copy. Derleth actually took a large part of the loan he had to build his house, and Wandre kicked in some money as well, just so they could afford to publish it. And throughout the history of Arkham House, up until Derleth's death in 1971, Derleth really didn't make any money. In fact, he he continued to finance with his own money from his own writings the publication of, of Arkham House books. And Derleth himself was a much, ironically, because now he's not, but when Lovecraft passed in 37, Derleth was already becoming a widely accepted non-genre author. He was working on a series of books, which was called The Sack Prairie, books, which is based on the area he came from, his town that he loved, Sauk City, which Arkham House still runs out of, to the south of my state in Wisconsin. It's about two hours to the south of me, maybe a little more, to the south of where I live. And one of his books, um, one of his most popular books in that series was um, was was this book, Walden West, which is a, a wonderful book. They're, they're non-fiction books. They're really just although he wrote fictional books about the area as well, they're really just collections of what the area was like, the people, the way they lived. He was a very significant regional writer. Now, Derleth is pretty much all but forgotten today. There is an August Derleth Historical Society that runs out of Sark City, just like Arkham House still runs out of Sark City. But he's not remembered really for that regional fiction at all. He's remembered now for his involvement in founding Arkham House and his involvement with writing Lovecraft pastiches, I guess. But an incredible man, an incredible writer, and literally the man who saved H.P. Lovecraft, along with Donald Wandre. And so if you're going to ever consider buying an H.P. Lovecraft collection, visit the Arkham House website, or if you don't want to get a new copy, you can get lots of editions online, some very reasonably, particularly some more recently published Arkham House editions are very affordable if you scan the the used book market online. I enjoyed talking to you today about one of my favorite authors, H.P. Lovecraft, and about, more to the point, the publishing house and the people who saved him so that people like myself and hopefully you are able to read him still to this day. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel and catch me every Saturday night at 11 p.m. Central with my co-host Jen Durrell, where we talk about all things weird and wonderful. And until I talk to you again, keep it weird.